What has been lost at ages has now been found. I present to you the medical insert of sharing oral primobolin, 5 mg methylene acetate tablets. Let's dive in, shall we? Vigorous Steve here. This is a quick addendum to the best weekly dose of Prima Bolland video, which I made a couple of weeks ago, where I already reviewed all of the available scientific literature about methanolone inotate and acetate. But in that video, I specifically asked you guys for the medical insert of Bayer Remobolin S tablets, methanolone acetate tablets, which is currently only available as a pharmaceutical in Japan. Tommy, a loyal subscriber and avid collector of anabolic paraphernalia, sent me a couple of pictures of sharing AG Germany oral primobolin, imported and distributed in Australia with an expiration date of December 2002. So that might be before some of you guys were even born. And based on this medical insert, it appears that oral methanolone acetate was prescribed in Australia for the treatment of osteoporosis in women when estrogen therapy was contraindicated. At dosages between 5 mg to 10 mg orally twice daily, so that's the total daily dose between 10 mg to 20 mg, but the insert specifically mentioned that underweight women should not exceed 10 milligrams daily. And this treatment is a little bit different from the treatment which I found previously, which I documented in the best weekly dose of primobolin video, where a primobolin S, a methanone acetate, is prescribed in the treatment of anemia due to bone marrow failure at dosages between 1 milligram to 1.5 milligrams orally per 1 pound of body weight daily. And if you were to extrapolate that to a 200 pound bodybuilder, that would be a dose between 200 milligrams up to 300 milligrams oral methanolone acetate daily. So which medical condition do you identify most with? Osteoporosis or anemia? I'm going to go with anemia, 300 milligrams methanolone acetate Yes, please. The medical insert reports that primobolin is generally well tolerated at the recommended dosages, but the commonly associated side effects of anabolic androgenic steroids might still occur. And those include nausea, headache, libido issues, flatulence. I mean, that's new. I haven't found that in any medical insert so far. Water retention, closure of the growth plates, even though oxandrolone, right, not methylone, oxandrolone, is prescribed to accelerate height velocity in cases of Turner syndrome or other short stature conditions in children. HPTA downregulation. Again, uh, there's no clear luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone assessment during the clinical trials or other human studies when it comes to methylone enitate or acetate. Gynecomastia, which shouldn't really occur because methylone doesn't convert into estradiol. If anything, it reduces the conversion of testosterone into estradiol and virilization in women, which is clearly established in the scientific literature. As a special note, they mentioned that anabolic steroids should not be used in athletic training or to enhance muscular development. So now that they specifically mention it, I only want to take methylone acetate for these specific purposes more. And this part is very funny to me. They specifically mentioned that patients should check their liver function and lipid parameters frequently throughout the methylone acetate treatment. But a little bit earlier, they also mentioned that skewed lipids and liver parameters are a rarely reported side effect of anabolic steroid. Please make up your mind. After reading this short medical insert, I didn't change my mind on methanolone acetate at all. I still think that injectable methanolone enitate, remobolin, is far superior. And if you want to go with an oral, go with oral oxandrolone anivar, which has a lot more scientific evidence behind it. And if you haven't watched those excellent deep dives yet, if I do say so myself, then you definitely should. I'll link them at the end of this one, which is now. That's all I got for today, buddy. Go away now.